pamphlet led to the first outbreak of violence between Patriots and Redcoats during the years leading up to the American Revolution. Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we'll be discussing Alexander McDougall. Now Alexander McDougall is uh, fairly similar to New York as John Hancock was to Boston in that he was an extremely wealthy merchant and became leader of a local Sons of Liberty. The difference is, instead of inheriting his wealth, Alexander McDougall had made his money as a privateer during the French and Indian War, and he was able to take some of that earnings and turn himself into a fabulously wealthy merchant. Now, as with most merchants, when certain new taxing regulations came down from Parliament, Alexander McDougall was not happy because it severely hurt his business. So he did join the local Sons of Liberty, and actually, he wrote a pamphlet titled The Betray to the betrayed inhabitants of the city and colony of New York. Now this little pamphlet was taken by some of his friends and posted around town. And the British soldiers did not care for this at all. So they went around taking them down and actually they started posting up new handbills that said essentially do what the government wants you to do. Be a good little, uh, be a good little British person. Now this led to what was known as the Battle of Golden Hill. And essentially, the British soldiers were posting their handbills, and some patriots led by Isaac Sears went and stopped them and did a kind of a citizen's arrest on some of them. Now, others ran away, and there was a lot of confusion, and so a bunch of townspeople got together, and a bunch of British soldiers got together, and there was some scuffling and some punching, and apparently some of the townspeople got hurt. Allegedly, one uh, person was killed, but this is hard to prove, which makes me think it's not true. Uh, and a bunch of the British soldiers suffered some bruising. So it wasn't the worst violence in the world, but this was six weeks before the Boston Massacre, which we all recognize the Boston Massacre. Granted, people were killed in the Boston Massacre, but... It is arguable that the Battle of Golden Hill was the first violence to outbreak for the American Revolution. I said arguable, and people will argue with that statement. I understand that. But uh, it wasn't very serious violence, but there was a confrontation. And this confrontation made Alexander McDougall fairly well known, and he became a leader in the local Sons of Liberty and became part of the Committee of Correspondence. Uh, he would then, after the war began, uh, sign up for the Continental Army, and he would serve uh, throughout the northern theater of the war. Uh, he would eventually get promoted to Major General. He would mostly stay in the Hudson River region, uh, basically in charge of watching the British, making sure they didn't go anywhere, essentially. Uh, so he doesn't have the most, how do you say, um, fun or uh, energetic or he didn't see a ton of action. I'll put it like that. But he was a major general, and he did have a very important role in the war, even though it might not make for the best movie. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, McDougall actually is the one appointed uh, in charge of West Point immediately after Benedict Arnold <laughs> does a little treasoning, and someone else needs to take over his old job. Alexander McDougall's given that job. And then, interestingly enough, uh, at the end of the war, after the violence ended... When Yorktown concluded, there was still some waiting around while the final treaty was sent over and signed and approved. And during this time, the soldiers and officers of the army were not getting paid and they were nervous they would never get paid. So they sent Alexander McDougall to Philadelphia to tell the Continental Congress about their fears. And he did this. Now, unfortunately, Congress didn't listen to him. And this is what led to the Newburgh Conspiracy, which was... A confrontation between uh, the generals that was only they considered more or less taking over Congress and having a coup except George Washington came in and uh, put a stop to that uh, I believe I have made a video about that the Newburgh conspiracy is a video in itself that's fairly famous you should definitely look into it uh, but we don't have time for that now the thing is McDougal missed the Newburgh conspiracy, conspiracy because he was in Philadelphia still trying to get the Continental Congress to listen to the soldiers' demands. Although he was sympathetic to their position, uh, he understood since they didn't have any money, they couldn't really pay anyone. Uh, McDougall would go on to actually be elected to the Continental Congress before being chosen as Secretary of the Marine, which made him one of the first, essentially, secretary Secretaries of the Navy. Uh, 
Now, unfortunately, uh, McDougal aged and passed away just before the Constitution was ratified, so he never saw the new government, but he was an extraordinarily, mem extraordinarily important member of New York uh, leading up to and during the American Revolution. As I said, uh, he was a son of liberty, one of the leading sons of liberty, which while we usually think Boston when we hear the term sons of liberty, they were in most cities, and New York's sons of liberty were, well, pretty tough. Again, the Battle of Golden, uh, Golden Hill, there was some uh, punching and kicking going on. So that's the story of Alexander McDougall. Extraordinarily brief. I, I did kind of cut through some of his time, you know, uh, during the war itself and, and all of that nature. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this brief look at Alexander McDougall's life. If you did, please hit like. And if you really liked it, you should definitely subscribe, especially if you're new here, because I put out videos like this five days a week. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to bringing you another founder tomorrow.